Jodie, it's the first time you've been um, acting in a feature film since 2013, and I wonder what it was right. that drew you back in front of the camera. Gosh, um, you know, it's not that mysterious. I think, um, obviously I've been directing a lot, so that's taken up my time, but uh, I just have to respond to something and say this moves me and I really need to do it because I care about it. And um, that that's, the, after 52 years in the business, I think, that I finally come to the place where I just want to make movies because I love them. And um, this came across my desk, and um, you know I loved it, and I, I, I really fought for it and went out. And they're both fascinating characters that you play. What did you enjoy about exp exploring them? Uh, everything, you know, uh, the relationship between the two characters. I also love, you know, uh, the characters are really, really multi-layered, and but I love the interaction with, between Nurse and Everest because there's just in that relationship it, in itself is very multi-layered. But I think the dedication and loyalty that the characters have to one another is what's really, really special. You know, I, so I think that like that's what I, I connect with. That's what I bond with. Yeah, it does really feel like a little sort of mother-son love yeah. story. You know, they they love each other so much they say mean things to each yeah. other all the time. Yeah. They get under each other's skin, and course, you, you yeah. can really feel that this dynamic has been going on yeah. for so many years. Yeah, it feels like a family. Yeah. You know. And it's quite a disturbing view of the future in some ways. Set ten years on. Um, do you think there's sort of some sense of reality and there? Could you see some of these things kind of happening? Absolutely. So many of them. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you talk about the uh, the technology in the movie is absolutely state of the art technology that, mm. that is being hap is happening now in terms of medical research the military mm. is working on. Um, the the police force, the brutality of the police force, and these kind of elaborate riot gears. The uh, what's happening in the you know healthcare in our country and in other mm. places. Um, the the horrible dynamic between rich and poor economically and that kind of struggle. I mean, yeah. all these things are really very pertinent things that are happening today. Ten, 10 20 years from now, this is where yeah. we could be. And I think it's a cool thing because people, you know, if they can relate to it and connect to it, they're always going to be kind of more involved there. Um, so, I, and I think, you know, nothing in this film is very far-fetched. Uh, obviously, you know, this is drama. We embellish things a little bit here and there to, you know, for the dramatic effect, but nothing is really... Uh, out of uh, the stretch of the imagination that happens in this film, uh, the technology yeah. and the political climate, you know, and uh, environmental uh, right. things. It just you know, really is. It's relevant, I think. Yeah, especially yeah. the water rights in Los yeah. Angeles. Yeah, right. and I could definitely see that happening yeah. soon, where yeah. you know we don't have enough water, so people have to pay for water, yeah. and that means it's, you've yeah. got to, you know, the rich and the poor, yeah. or some people are going to be able to live, and some yeah. people aren't. That's happening. People are investing now in water. And congratulations on the um, the film. First of all, it was one of the rare movies where it came to the end and I was like, I could really watch the whole thing again. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it is quite short as well, so uh, that helped. <laughs> that helped, but, yes. Uh, if it's two and a half hours, then you, you don't have that. Yeah, yeah. That's tough. <laughs> but yeah, so original and s suspenseful and uh, really unpredictable oh, as, as well. Oh, thank you. Um, could you tell us a bit about the um, inspiration um, behind the movie? Well, the inspiration for the film comes from lots of different places. As the writer and director, you know, you get to kind of soak up a whole bunch of, uh, of influences for a while. On one hand, I love movies about bad guys. Um, you know, uh, I think they can be much more interesting in the same way that actors always talk about the fact that they would rather play bad guys than good guys. I think a movie that's all bad guys is inherently a bit more interesting. It's also a movie that's like steeped in Los Angeles where I've lived for the last seven years and I love it. Um, so there's a hundred years of Los Angeles pop culture in the movie. But I also wanted to tell this you know, sci-fi um, genre story that at its heart was a little emotional tale um, about Jodie Foster's character, the nurse, and the tragedy in her past that kind of spawned this entire hospital. I just wondered what you both most enjoyed about playing these characters. Toying him around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I liked being someone who just behaved and moved and acted in such a different way than I normally would, you know. I loved playing a character that is also, you know, uh, that I've done like all these action, but has that such a strong woman side of her and very much, you know, very feminine and, and very elegant at the mm. same time, not just strong and tough. And you got to work with um, Jodie Foster, of course. Can you tell us a bit about um, your experience of working with her? I loved it. You know, she's just very kind and very calm, you know, not not very respectful of others and very discreet, you know? And then I think a lot of what she does shows up after on, on the screen, but everything is, is it seems so natural, you know? Yeah, I mean, she's it's really, she's so good at what she does and she's done it for mm -hmm. so long that it seems effortless for yeah. her. 
and then she was just a pleasure to be around, you know, just wonderfully professional and yeah. uh, and more approachable than you would think she would be. Very intelligent, and you can see that in like in her her energy around, you know. And her character says at one point, um, "This is America. Eighty-five percent of what I do in here is fixed bullet bullet holes." Mm. Um, and I just wondered. I think good sci-fi often has something to say about pre present time. If you found there were things in this film that um, spoke to you about today. Well, there's lots of little sort of warning signs like that line, and just the whole running theme of running out of water, and uh, and the running themes of uh, the the rich versus the poor, the have versus the have not. And, um, police violence on on people. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, he touches on all of those, but not with such a heavy hand that mm -hmm. uh, the movie comes across uh, overly preachy about one or the other. And I love the way um, your character, the nurse, sort of stands up to some of these quite scary people that come into yes. the hotel. What did you enjoy about um, playing that aspect of it? Um, I just think it's funny, you know, to play this little old lady who's this little short old lady who's with gray hair who uh, wields such power and who's seen it all. Uh, but of course, she only does that because she has Everest behind her, who she knows is uh, mm. going to pick up the pieces if she gets in real trouble. Yeah. But I think also she's fearless. I think she's fearless, mm. you know. And I, and I think she's, you know, she's strong, you know. Yeah, yeah she's been through a lot, and yeah. you find that out through the course of the film, yeah. that in some ways that her past is haunting her, that the ghosts of her past are still present in her life, and that she yeah. hasn't quite gotten over them, and that's why she's in the kind of hamster wheel that she's in. What would you say was the most memorable moment or funniest moment for you on set while making the movie? Funniest moment? There were a lot of rats in, yeah. in the alley that we were shooting in, yeah. and there, there were a lot of mishaps, people having yeah. to lie on the ground, and then you just see this like, <laughs> <laughs> and just be like rats everywhere. Yeah. I didn't realize there were so many rats there in Los Angeles. Lot, there were one particular alley we were shooting in. There were yeah, they so gave us many this, so they were rats. Like, we spent two weeks getting rid of the rats here. Uh, I was like, you didn't, didn't do, do such a, a good, good job. job. Right? Yeah, if they got rid of them, how many of them were there before <laughs> we got there? There, was, there were rats everywhere. And you'd be doing the scene, and you'd be talking to another actor, and you'd just see them watching you on the fire on the. Uh, the whatever the things are on the side of the building on the scaffolding they're just sitting there like looking sitting at there, you yeah. in pairs yeah. and I loved your fight sequence um, in the film Sophia it's just a stunning sequence can you tell us a bit about um, creating that and I guess your your background as a dancer must really help when it always, comes to those scenes always it helps also for the, just not not those fight sequences but also like the the walk and the sort of demeanor that I give to my character I think this woman, especially being so feminine and so um, elegant, I think that also gives me, you know, that sort of embodiment. But uh, yeah, I do treat every fight sequence like a choreography that helps me to memorize it. Um, yeah. And your musical yourself, I, I believe you were in a band and um, you've directed a lot of music videos. I was yeah. in a band. <laughs> I was in several bands. Yeah. But not currently, no. 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 <laughs> oh. oh, that ship has long <laughs> since sailed. Um, but I love the, the music in, in the movie. you got Cliff Martinez on board for the score. Absolutely. And then some great songs in there. Can you talk about that yeah. aspect of it? Yeah. Um, I mean, music is massively important to me. I was a musician in the beginning, and I have made music videos, and um, a lot of my friends are musicians. And so that's a massive part of the movie. I love the juxtaposition of Cliff Martinez with a kind of futuristic score with 1970s LA Canyon rock. I also love the idea that the nurse would escape from the tragedy in her past, Jodie's character, um, by kind of blocking it out with the music from her childhood. Um, and so there's the mamas and the papas in there and, and a beautiful Neil Young cover by Buffy St. Marie, which we were incredibly lucky that Neil let us have. Plus, there's a secret bonus track at the, uh, the end of the credits by uh, Father John Misty, uh, who, um, who I've made music videos for, and who also, people don't realize, is also acting in the film. Um, he's one of the bank robbers at the beginning. Dave, you're not the first person to make the transition from um, successful wrestler to right. Hollywood. I just wondered how you'd found the transition and how welcoming kind of the film community had, had been to you. Um, no, not very welcoming at all. But I think... <laughs> they were, we were welcoming. No, yeah. no, I <laughs> no. had a hard time finding work. But I think uh, it's because, you know, it's weird. It's always going to be an individual thing, I think. Uh, you know, for one, there's not many professional wrestlers who have transi transi transitioned yeah. successfully. Um, and then there's other ones who have, but they've just... They were had different aspirations than I had, um, or have, and I think it's you know I really wanted to be an actor, so 
getting the roles that I was after was just not very easy because people couldn't see me in those roles. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was it. It was I had to prove my worth as as an actor. I had to prove to people that I wanted to be an actor. Uh, where you know, whereas I didn't want to be a movie star, and I think a lot of people leave wrestling thinking, "Well, I'm going to go be a movie star now," and that wasn't at all what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Like I really just wanted to be a working actor. That's all I wanted. You know, it wasn't the money, it wasn't the spotlight. I just wanted to be a better actor. And the hotel is full of criminals, obviously, um, but the kind of violence is mainly kind of off screen. I think one thing that made it so suspenseful for me was kind of that threat of violence rather than seeing too much graphic violence. Can you just talk a little bit about that? As a yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's kind of interesting. When, when people talk about the movie, often they talk about the violence in it, but we see very little in the film. Um, I think sometimes what people are responding to is the, is the very brief moments of, uh, of the operations in the film. And I like that because I wanted the medical aspect of it to feel as violent as, as the fighting. Um, because the reason it's a hospital is because, you know, bullets hurt, um, you know, fighting hurts. And I didn't want to shy away from that in the reality of, of the movie. Even though it's heightened, um, there are no stakes and there's no drama if people aren't in danger. And people can be a bit squeamish when they're watching movies, can't they? Did you feel like you had to ever hold back on some of what you were sharing? Yeah. No, I mean, the interesting thing is I actually think I went m more gory uh, in the final uh, flush of the movie because I didn't want it to seem cute. I didn't want us to be doing down the damage that uh, is happening to the people in the film um, because I felt like it was because it literally does get that reaction from the audience and um, you know and it's actually really satisfying when you hear a whole theater go or uh, or you know there's one moment in the film which always gets a giant and when Sterling K Brown who plays Waikiki first saw it in our edit bay he literally jumped back four feet and hid under a table which you know I don't expect everybody to do, particularly if they're sitting in a theatre, but like, um, but it's good. It's good to know you've got reactions. And the film looks stunning. I wonder if you could just talk Thank a bit you. about your guiding principles for that. And Chung Hoon Chung, who, who's your cinematographer on the movie, he's done some amazing work. In it. Oh, he's incredible. Yeah. Um, when I came to the visuals of the movie, uh, I, I, my starting point was Los Angeles and the kind of idea of those busted deco hotels. And I loved the idea of 1920s meets 2020s. Um, but I also wanted something that felt and looked fresh, you know, and, um, and one of the biggest influences on me is Asian cinema from the last 10 years. Uh, and so I, when I went to cinematographers, I was talking to, you know, big and small, um, but I realized at some point that most of the references I was showing them were by Chung Hoon Chung, who is Director Park's um, cinematographer. And so I figured, well, maybe I should talk to him, and I was lucky enough to get him. So I always pitched the movie as John Carpenter, as if directed by Wong Kar Wai. And though it's not that, I think it's in the ballpark. And I love the opening where we get to see a bit of news footage in the Griffith Observatory and iconic LA and movie building as well is kind of burning and riots are taking over the city. Um, there's a real kind of sense of it being grounded in reality. And even That's, though it's, yeah. it's kind of set 10 years in the future, I just wondered how influenced you were by, I'm not sure if they're futurists or futurologists, but what they say about what might be sort of coming to us. Well, you know, on some levels, the movie's obviously set 10 years later than ours in 2028, and I hope the future that it shows uh, of a ravaged LA and water riots and an increased difference between the haves and haves nots, I hope that doesn't end up being our future. And I think the movie is perhaps hopeful about how we get ourselves out of that by working with each other. Um, but one of the ways that I actually came up with what the landscape of uh, Los Angeles 2028 would look like is I've, uh, I've worked on uh, a whole bunch of big movies as a screenwriter like Iron Man and, and Mission Impossible and um, I, I'm very lucky because I've accumulated this kind of gang of futurists from NASA and SpaceX and Homeland Security that I can talk to and get a sense of kind of the secrets of the future because the interesting thing about 10 years time is most of the things that will exist in 10 years already exist we just don't know about them. So from the political landscape to the technology we use, that stuff um, 
is all pretty real. And there's a lot of rules at the Hotel Artemis. I just wondered if there are any rules in your own life or just guidelines that you like to live by. Oh, don't sleep in. <laughs> don't sleep in? No. Ever? Not, not anymore. I don't, I don't allow myself to sleep in anymore. What time do you get even up on then? Days, I, I just like, I'm just so bad at sleeping these days. Like I just, even if I try, it just doesn't happen. So I suppose I better wake up and do something. What, yeah. What time does the alarm go off on a normal day? I think it would be like 10 would be like the maximum, but I have to wake up like at seven or six most of these days where I'm working. Uh, mine would be don't ever answer a number you don't recognize. <laughs> <laughs> so I just let it, let it go to voicemail. Just don't yeah. pick up. It's, it's often not good. Yeah, I do that too. I have that one too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good one. Me too. I never answer the phone. Charlie Sophia, thanks very much. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. And just finally, I feel like this could work very well as a TV series. You know, you get different people in um, each week or, or whatever, or however it works nowadays, um, or, or a film secret series um, equally. And I know you kind of need to wait to get this one out there but what, yeah what let's you, see yeah. let's see if there's an appetite for more I mean I would love to explore these characters again I would love to explore the Artemis um, we mention and hint at in the movie that there are other dark rooms around the world DRs you know independent secret hospitals for criminals in 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 lots of different cities so it's definitely something I would like to explore also you know the biggest cinematic influence on me is casualty and um, and uh, so uh, all I'm trying to do with my entire life is get back to 6.30 p.m. on BBC One. And, uh, and so obviously, um, you know, if I can get closer to that with Hotel Artemis, then it's worth it. True Pierce, thanks very much. <laughs> Always good to get casualty yes. in there. Yeah, exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!